and today's video is on coffee cup calorimetry calculations. So here we have uh, today's lesson on coffee cup calorimetry calculations. Try to recall calorimetry, that's heat measurement. So in a coffee cup uh, calorimeter, just like the one you see here, we have our reaction hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide gives water and sodium chloride. We're trying to find the enthalpy change for this reaction, and we use the calorimeter to do it. 10 mils of hydrochloric acid and 12 mils of one molar NaOH. This will ensure the hydrochloric acid is limiting, using a little bit more of the NaOH. We use a LabQuest instead of a thermometer. So totally we have 22 mils of solution. When the reaction proceeds, you'll get a graph of the temperature like this, and you'll see here the increase in temperature due to the reaction. Here we have the initial temperature, there the final temperature, and you can see over on the right-hand side, the temperature declines gradually afterwards. Our calorimeter isn't perfect. Let's see what this looks like in lab. Here we have Taylor and Julian. Tell me, what's up, you guys? Acids up, and bases, more base than acid, and they're reacting to form heat. It's pretty darn cool. Okay, what are you doing right now? We're right stirring now, to I'm keep it. Stirring it. Okay. Just keep it mixed. Yeah. Right, so let's look at your data. Oh, well, here we go, it's upside down. Are you gonna turn around? Okay, a bit in the glitz, stay still. Oh yeah, there we go, that looks pretty good. Hey, Tegan and Eva, how you guys doing? Good. good. Yeah, what's up to? We are currently performing the coffee, coffee cup calorimetry setup and we're swirling um, the solution that contains the base and acid around. Okay, can I see your data? Yeah, for sure. Have a look there. <laughs> look at that. Beautiful. That is really looking fantastic, very smooth. And uh, you can see the reaction is done now and just losing a little bit of heat to the environment. But that looks fantastic. Look at this. Lots of calculations. You're just about ready to uh, analyze everything. Uh, Gammy here. This is our data. We've done all three trials, and they were all very similar. We just saw Gabby and Sammy's data, so let's have a look and try to analyze that right now. This is their first run. Their initial temperature was 23.3 degrees. The final temperature is 29.2. That gave them a change of temperature of 5.9 degrees Celsius. So remember that the delta H for our reaction, the units of that are kilojoule per mole. Kilojoules here, or the energy we're going to get from the heat change, or the, sorry, the heat that flowed into water. You'll need an opposite sign here because the heat that flowed into the water flowed out of the reaction. And we'll get the number of moles of NaOH and HCl. We use HCl for this one from the volume and concentration. So the enthalpy here, or the change in enthalpy, that should be delta H, will be negative mc delta T over N, where N is the moles. Here we can see the calculation. Use the volume of hydrochloric acid, the density, sorry, we use the volume of the total solution. Use the density of the solution, call it the same as water, the heat capacity of water and delta T. Divide this by the number of moles of hydrogen chloride that were there. Use the concentration and the volume. Let's check the units. The top calculation is in joules, and on the bottom we wind up with moles. Remember, delta H needs to be in units of kilojoule per mole. That's what we want. So we'll have to make sure we do some conversion to convert these joules into kilojoules for our final calculation. So this number, when you compute it, is a large number of joules per mole, and uh, we'll just make sure that we convert that. Okay, just be sure you convert this to kilojoules using that term. So here's delta H, and it will wind up with 54.3 kilojoule per mole, negative. The reaction is exothermic. However, be careful with significant digits. This uh, calculation has just two significant digits in it from the temperature change. That's negative 54 kilojoule per mole. And there we have the enthalpy change for the reaction. Computing the percentage error is not difficult. You remember how to do this. We'll get our own lab results, subtract the accepted ones from it, divide that by the accepted results, and multiply by 100%. We do it this way. 
So the numbers that we calculate, in this case, you can see we'll just put in our values, the accepted value is 57.1 kilojoule per mole, divide by that one, multiply by 100, and in our case we get a percentage error of 1.7%. In fact, it's a negative 1.7%. The meaning of the negative sign is to say that our value is 1.7% too small. That's reasonable and uh, sensible given that our calorimeter is not perfect. And it's a great result for a high school lab using coffee cups, not particularly perfectly uh, mixed solutions, and so on. Let's have a look now at a spreadsheet that'll help us to see the calculations in a little bit more tabulated form. So here's the coffee cup calorimetry spreadsheet. You can see we'll enter the temperatures of both solutions to start off with. This spreadsheet actually can handle them starting at different temperatures. They do wind up at 29.9 in this scenario together using now data that didn't come from Sammy and Gabby. The result here was negative 53.4 kilojoule per mole for a negative 6.5% error. In other words, a value that's a little too small. So let's look at what's coming up. Hess's Law, that's in our next lab. So have a look at the next video in this playlist for more on the topic and stay tuned for our next lesson in Chemistry 12, Lesson 2, Hess's Law. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe.